Hey, quick question. How many continents are there? Seven? Maybe five? There's no correct answer. According to different approaches, the range is between four to seven. But it might actually be as many as eight. Chances are, a lost continent has recently been found between Greenland and Canada. This new continent discovery could also potentially be the key to how microcontinents form. What does this all mean, and what makes this hidden landmass near Greenland so important? Now, if you're like me, and if you are, then there's two of us. When you hear the word continent, you probably think of land like Europe or Africa, places above water where people live. But in science, a continent isn't about being above sea level. It's about what the land is made of. Earth's outer layer, called the crust, comes in two main types, continental and oceanic. Continental one is thicker, lighter, and made of different types of rock, like granite. The oceanic crust is thinner, heavier, and made mostly of dark volcanic rock. Now, the discovery under the Davis Strait, between Greenland and Canada, appears to be a piece of continental landmass, even though it's under the ocean. Scientists call it a proto-microcontinent because it began to break off from a larger terrain millions of years ago, but never quite made it. As tectonic plates slowly shifted, the Earth's crust in this region stretched and cracked. One chunk started to split away, but for some reason, the process stopped. It didn't drift off like a full continent, and it didn't sink like ocean crust either. Instead, it stayed right there, floating beneath the waves all this time. This makes it different from true microcontinents, like Zealandia, which have completely detached and now exist as separate tectonic blocks. Zealandia is a submerged microcontinent near New Zealand. About 94% of it lies underwater, but because it's made of continental crust, many geologists say it qualifies as Earth's eighth continent. However, Zealandia is still debated because it's too big to be a microcontinent and there's no official global body to define its status. There's no global organization like the UN or some kind of international geology council that can declare, hey, this is a new continent. Unlike Madagascar, which is fully above sea level and widely accepted by geologists as a classic example of a microcontinent, Zealandia is still waiting for a proper label. I know you're probably wondering, isn't Madagascar an island? Mm. The simple answer is, it's both. It's the fourth largest island in the world completely surrounded by water. But it's also geologically considered a microcontinent because it broke off from the supercontinent Gondwana around 88 million years ago and is made of continental crust, not oceanic crust. Unlike volcanic islands like Hawaii, this isn't just built from lava. It's a real piece of ancient continental crust. So, Madagascar checks both boxes – island by geography, microcontinent by geology. And that's exactly why these discoveries can be fascinating. Just like Madagascar stands out above the waves, this newly discovered landmass under the Davis Strait stands out beneath them, thanks to its unusual structure. What makes it stand out is its unusual thickness. Most of the ocean floor is thin, like metal. This is more like packed clay layered with continental materials. Underneath this cozy comforter, scientists discovered some odd layers of rock. Unusual because they're not where they should be. These layers act more like the materials found on continents rather than those typically seen on ocean floors. There are hints of granite-like formations and distinct magnetic properties, which suggest that this stuff is similar to what makes up dry land. The size is also remarkable. The proto-microcontinent is about 12 to 15 miles across, which makes it roughly the size of a mid-sized city, like Manhattan Island that's 6,500 feet underwater. The fact that it sits right under the Davis Strait, one of the widest ocean passages on Earth, makes it one of the largest submerged continental fragments we've found. According to researchers, this landmass began to form between 58 and 49 million years ago when Greenland and Canada were slowly drifting apart. Maybe they just weren't getting along. Mm -hmm. Hey, it happens. As they pulled apart, the crust under the Davis Strait stretched, and one of the main fault lines shifted. But the breakup didn't finish. Around 48 million years ago, the rifting stalled, and Greenland's motion away from Canada slowed dramatically when it later bumped into Ellesmere Island. 
It's like a car swerving off and then back onto the freeway, a turn that was never completed. That's basically what happened. A chunk of land got stuck between the motion. It didn't float off into the ocean like a new continent, and it didn't get pulled down into the earth either. It just stayed where it was, stranded beneath the water. But that's not all. This chunk has its own fault system. And scientists say it actually looks like a miniature version of the San Andreas Fault in California. Now, a fault is basically a crack in the Earth's crust where sections of rock slide past each other. Think of it as a place where the Earth's surface split and tried to slide sideways. In California, this movement still happens today and can cause earthquakes. But under the Davis Strait, it's a different story. The movement started, then suddenly stopped, like hitting pause in the middle of a big shift. It's a frozen moment in the planet's past, preserved right beneath the waves. For geologists, that makes the microcontinent under Davis Strait incredibly valuable. That sudden pause in motion helps explain why some chunks of land break away cleanly, while others twist, stall, or disappear. But this isn't just academic. By studying how continents break apart or stall, scientists can better predict future shifts in land, fault lines, and seismic activity. And predicting earthquakes and geological hazards could prove quite valuable to everyone. Knowing how microcontinents form could help us anticipate how the planet's surface might shift over millions of years, which affects everything from climate models to resource availability. But even just the technological advancement needed for such discoveries is greatly beneficial. The same tools used to map this hidden land are used for oil exploration, laying undersea cables, climate monitoring, and even search and rescue missions. Speaking of technology, for a long time, this hidden landmass near Greenland remained invisible. Just 10 or 15 years ago, the ocean floor under the Davis Strait was basically a mystery. It's deep, almost frozen, obviously not the easiest place to explore. But today, thanks to modern tools, a new continent discovery could be just a matter of time. Scientists can finally see and hear what's going on under all that water. First, they use seismic reflection imaging. That's a method where ships send sound waves down to the ocean floor and record how they bounce back. Various layers of rock reflect sounds in different ways, which helps build a picture of what's hidden underneath. It's kind of like how bats use echoes to see in the dark. Satellites also play a role in collecting gravity data. This may sound strange, but different types of rocks have slightly different weights. Heavier rocks create stronger gravitational pull, and satellites can measure those tiny differences. Another tool commonly used for these explorations is underwater sensors, which sit quietly on the seafloor and listen for natural vibrations, like many earthquakes or shifts in rock. These vibrations help scientists figure out what the crust is made of and how thick it is. They're basically ears on the ocean floor. They also most likely used AUVs, or autonomous underwater vehicles, basically robot submarines that can scan the seafloor in high resolution even under thick ice. In any case, scientists are very excited because this new continent discovery is more than just a geological surprise. It's what they call a natural laboratory. The study of the microcontinent Davis Strait offers a rare opportunity to understand how microcontinents form, evolve, and sometimes fail to fully separate. It also reminds us that Earth's crust isn't as neatly divided as we once thought. Beneath the ocean, there may be other hidden landmasses near Greenland or elsewhere, almost continents just waiting to be found. This lost continent of Canada may not have made it as a fully-fledged landmass, but its discovery is already reshaping how we view plate tectonics. And thanks to advances in technology, places we once ignored are now offering up secrets about the planet's deep past, and maybe even its future. Now quick, how many continents are there on Earth? You'd probably say seven, I would. But honestly, this question doesn't have a right answer anymore. Technically, yes, Earth has seven continents. But our geography books have been ignoring this whole part of the world. For years, scientists have been arguing hmm. that there's actually an eighth continent hiding out there. And it's called Zealandia. Turns out this lost continent isn't so lost anymore. A few years ago, researchers finally mapped out exactly where Zealandia is and how massive it really is. And that was a first. 
because Zealandia is nothing like the other continents. Think about it. Asia, Europe, Africa, you can spot them from space. Or better yet, just look down at your feet. Right now, you are standing on a continent. But most people don't realize every continent on Earth has parts we can't step on or even see. A lot of their land is hidden under the ocean, and those areas are tough to map or even explore. Now, imagine a continent that's 94% underwater. That'd be almost impossible to find, right? Well, that's Zealandia, a massive chunk of land located beneath the Pacific Ocean. And there's a reason for that. A long, long time ago, Zealandia was part of Gondwana, an ancient supercontinent that included South America, Africa, Antarctica, Australia, and parts of Asia. For millions of years, Gondwana held together until it started breaking apart about 200 million years ago. Its pieces slowly drifted in different directions, and one of them was Zealandia. At first, it was still connected to both Australia and Antarctica. But around 85 million years ago, Zealandia finally split off and began drifting on its own, becoming an isolated continent. Now, unlike Australia or Antarctica, Zealandia didn't stay on the surface for long. It sank. Today, only a small part of it sticks out above the ocean. That's mostly New Zealand, plus New Caledonia, and a few smaller Pacific islands. The rest is hidden under the sea. But hold on, how did Zealandia sink in the first place? For years, most experts thought Zealandia broke away in a process called a strike-slip breakup. That's when continents split apart along huge strike-slip fault zones places where tectonic plates slide past each other side by side. But something about that theory never quite added up. After years of research, scientists think they have finally cracked the mystery. Turns out, Zealandia's crust, or the outer shell of the continent, had been stretched thin. Yep, that's right. Instead of sliding sideways, like they once thought, the land was actually stretching and breaking. It's just like pulling a piece of dough until it gets so thin it finally tears. That's basically what happened to Zealandia. The land stretched so much it eventually snapped. And that happened because the tectonic plates beneath Zealandia were pulling apart, thinning the crust until it finally broke. And when it did, it cracked big time. The cracks were big enough for ocean water to rush in through the gaps, creating what we now know as the Tasman Sea. A few million years later, even more stretching left Zealandia's crust thinner and weaker. Eventually, it gave way, and huge parts of it sank beneath the waves, sealing its fate as a lost continent. But it wasn't all that lost. Experts had actually suspected its existence for almost 400 years, and the big clue was its unusual thickness. You see, Earth's crust comes in two main kinds. We've got continental crust and oceanic crust. They're both part of the planet's outer shell of solid rock, but there are some big differences between them. The continental crust is kind of like a Chicago deep dish pizza. It's thicker. The oceanic crust, on the other hand, is more like a New York slice, thinner. Now let's drop both slices into a tank of water and see what happens. Okay, let's just say the deep dish is lighter, so it floats. That's why continents sit above the ocean. The New York slice is heavier so it sinks to the bottom of the tank. And that's why oceanic crust ends up lower, forming the ocean floor. There's another key difference, too. Continental crust is made of lots of different types of rock, while oceanic crust is mostly basalt, that dark volcanic rock we get from eruptions. Knowing this, scientists used advanced technology to investigate the South Pacific. And what they found was surprising. Areas once thought to be ordinary ocean floor were actually basalt-free and much thicker than ocean crust should be. So wait, could our sunken New York-style pizza actually be a Chicago deep dish? Well, yeah. Even though Zealandia's crust is still thinner than other continents, it's way thicker than real oceanic crust. Which means it's not just a patchwork of ocean floor and continental scraps. It's all continental crust, just a drowned version of it. In February 2017, scientists made the big announcement. Listen, everyone, Earth has eight continents. Ta-da! But back then, they had no idea what Zealandia really looked like. There wasn't a map or anything. And that's probably why so many people still don't know it exists. 
Even inside the scientific community, not everyone was thrilled about calling it the Eighth Continent. Some people believe that the strange land at the bottom of the ocean was just a bunch of submerged fragments or microcontinents. Now, here's the thing, though. Even before that big public announcement, an international team had already set sail on an expedition. They went near New Caledonia to collect seabed rock samples from North Zealandia, or precisely, from Fairway Ridge in the Coral Sea. Fast forward six years, and those very samples unlocked a major discovery about Zealandia – its true size. The combination of rock dating methods, magnetic signatures, and tectonic mapping helped scientists define where Zealandia's boundaries lie. And they found that Zealandia has nearly 2 million square miles of landmass. To put that in perspective, that's about 20 times bigger than New Zealand. For many specialists, its size and completeness basically rule out the idea that Zealandia isn't a real continent. But why doesn't it feel official yet? I mean, we don't see it on maps, right? Well, that's because it's hard to get everyone to agree on calling it a continent. And the biggest hmm. reason people resist it so much might be pretty simple. It's just not convenient. You see, continents are generally identified by convention rather than by strict criteria. Depending on the perspective, people recognize four, five, six, or seven continents because there's no such thing as a continent authority. And you are not going to see an international commission go on TV to name a new continent or to make an official list of how many there are. Being almost entirely underwater doesn't help Zealandia's case. I mean, is it really fair to call it a continent like Asia or Africa? Some people argue that if Zealandia qualifies, then other smaller mm. blocks of continental crust, like the Cocos Islands or other microcontinents, could also make the list. So how many more continents would we have to add to the list? See why it's not very convenient? Maybe it's safer to call Zealandia a submerged or sunken continent that's more accurate. Although, to be fair, the true definition of a sunken continent is still kind of fuzzy. But honestly, I wouldn't worry too much about the official definition of Zealandia. What really matters is that fully mapping it is already a big deal. Just keep in mind that large parts of it remain unexplored. Scientists are confident that technologies like seismic imaging and deep sea drilling will uncover even more about its structure and history. And just because Zealandia is mostly underwater doesn't make it any less of a geological marvel. This sunken landmass actually preserves clues about Earth's past that we might never see on continents above the surface. It might help scientists understand how continents shift as the plates move around. They also hope to find more clues about how drifting continents affect sea level, climate patterns, and the distribution of plants and animals. Each new discovery could sharpen our understanding of how Earth's surface reshapes itself. So, continent or not, Zealandia has already changed how we see our planet. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.